So we welcome our, our friends at home. A uh, reminder to them, our readings are from Psalm 133 and Acts chapter 4, verses 32 to 35. So if you want to pause the video and then you can join us after you've taken the time to read, we'll come full God with prayer now. Lord, we give you thanks and praise for the blessing that it is to be able to come and, uh, and, and read your word here today. Lord, we pray that these words will impact our hearts and our minds and, and transform us, continue to transform us as we live our lives to your glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. So I, I hope you, you might be seeing something in those, those readings at this, at this stage. You know, we, we've got the Psalm 133, and I'll unpack that a little bit more in, in a minute. But, you know, you hear the word, how pleasant it is for, for brethren to dwell together in unity. And then there's that, that image of the anointing of the head with the, the oil running down, the beard, onto the, the garments. Then we've got the image also of what it is to be a fellowship of believers coming together and living in response to what, what Jesus did for all those who have faith in him. And I was thinking about that, and you know, we're a week after after Easter, after remembering all, all these things, you know. And I asked myself, Luke, where, where are you at? Where are you at, Luke? I asked you here today, where are you at? Where are you at in this? I hope it's not, I hope we don't find ourselves in that space that, you know, it's not all like all, well, that's over for the year, let's move on to what comes next. Let's not be in that space. We don't want to be in that space. And, and it's so easy to inadvertently move, move there. You know, we need to remember that what we celebrated last week is the ultimate expression of the love of God. The ultimate expression of the love of God. And it didn't just change me. It didn't just change you. It did. But not just you, not just me. It changed everything. The whole game, the whole thing of what it is to be living life. It changed everything of what it means to have relationship with God. And it's still as awesome today as when we look back and remember. We look back and we hear the story. We hear the account. And it's awesome. And I don't use awesome willy-nilly and it's still awesome today. Jesus' work is still changing lives today. And, I, and it needs to be transformative when we remember that. When we know what we receive in Christ's sacrifice on the cross and his victory in the resurrection. When we know, when we understand, when we try to draw that in into a heart level, not just know about it, we remember that he paid the price. That you, that me, that all who call on his name as Lord and Saviour can be forgiven of their sin. What, what a big thing. What a big thing. I mean, how often do you choose to walk in sin? How thankful are we that it's ongoing for all time? What about that in his victory in being raised to life, in the resurrection? So not only did he pay the price for our sin, he opened the way to relationship with God. Not, it's not just some pie in the sky thing. Real relationship with God now and in eternity. 
for our faith in Him. Now, if we really grab this, if we really grasp it and wrestle with it and take it in, in the intent in which it is, you know, how can we not rejoice? If we have faith in this truth, how can there not be action? If we believe in, in what Christ won for us, there must be evidence. We see that in the Acts Church. Lives were changed. The way they lived their life was transformed. You know, this is the fruit of walking close with the Master as his disciples. When we allow him through the power of his Holy Spirit to transform us into his likeness. And in this, we should rejoice. So I ask again, where, where are you at? Where are you at in this? If we look at the words of the psalm, behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Then there's something about coming together with common-minded people that's really important. And so when I said about before about let's explore uh, about what the fellowship means after, after a worship service, I'm not just dangling a carrot because I'm trying to persuade you into something. It's because I want us to understand how important it is that fellowship in unity with that common denominator of Christ is essential. It's essential. It's a big part of who we are. Think of it even, even on a smaller level. Let's just take it down to a smaller level of making friends. You know, it's very rare for people to have friends with someone that they have nothing in common with. It's very, very hard to have a relationship with someone that, that they've got nothing to share. Because what draws us together are those common bonds, that common, common star. Who, who here has ever been lonely? Yeah. It's not a lovely feeling, is it? We, we, we need relationship. We feel we need it with, with other people, and we do. How much more when we remember that Jesus opens the way to relationship with the God who created all things. When we're no good on our own. We need relationship. We need relationship with each other. We crave relationship with God, even if we don't recognise it. See this in Psalm reminds us of that. Because it, it, it's one commentary suggests that it was having in mind that larger family of God people of God, which is what we just talked about. And uh, it goes on to suggest that it was written after Solomon's reign. And you remember what happened after Solomon's reign? The, the, the people of God, they, they split into the northern and southern kingdoms. Okay? And, and they, they, the, the commentator says that this is a, a prayer or a call for unity in God's people after that split. Not to focus on differences, which is so easy to do, isn't it? Not to focus on differences, but get, get in that right space. Unity in being centred on God's blessing. That, that's what this, this psalm is, is, is written towards. That, you know, it's a restorative call. A bringing back together the people of God. But, but we know it didn't really work out, did it? It didn't really work out. The northern and the southern kingdoms, Israel and Judah, they, they, they didn't end up coming together, did they? In Jesus' time. You know, but when we think about Jesus' time, the, the, the Samaritans were that, that remnant of the northern kingdom and, and the Jews disliked them a lot. A lot. I've got a lot written in capitals with exclamation mark. When I think about that, I, I just wonder how much of focusing on on self, ideas and understandings, 
rather than putting themselves in the right place, remembering the blessing of God and allowing that to transform people, but rather their opinions of other things, it creates separation. Obviously, we don't see that anymore. Do we? You know, it's, it's, it's evident everywhere. When people have differences, you know, we see it in, in God's church. We see it in our family. We see it in our friendships. We need to remember what we receive in Jesus. We need to move in love. And we need to move in that love that's not of our own origin, not of our own opinions or any of those sort of things, but, but in the love of God, the love that he, he showered upon us. I, I wanted to give you an example of, of what it is to, to, to look at something even smaller that hopefully illustrates the something larger that is the church. Okay? So on a much smaller, smaller scale, as I was reading this, I was reminded of the wonder that it is to spend time with, with people, with friends. Okay? Now, I might surprise some of you, but I do have friends. Okay? Where we have a common passion and a common interest for something. You know, put yourself in this story, in this illustration. You know, where you have a, a common passion or an interest for something in your own circles, what is that? In these spaces, it has the potential to be life giving, doesn't it? Where you, you are looking forward to being in that company. Does that make sense? Yeah. You know, it's a life giving time. I was thinking about my friends here in Harvey Bay who drive radio control cars. You know, when you look at that group, we come from all different backgrounds. All different backgrounds. And you know, none of them thinks of me as the weird religious guy. We have all different backgrounds, we have all different experiences, we're all different ages. And yet, when we get together in that common space, there is nothing but laughter. There is nothing but encouragement. There is nothing but trying to help people grow in their, their ability. So whether that be driving of the cars, whether that be fixing their cars, there's nothing but... But the, the, the desire to share resources, oh, I've got a spare receiver here. Is that going to be helpful to you? You can have it. The sharing of re, re, resources. And, you know, when we've had that time, everyone leaves looking forward to the next one where we're going to get together. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, they're looking forward to it. It's a life-giving time. You know, and in the time that we're apart, communication gets stronger. So you, you ring it up to see how they're going, you send in texts, you put the staff on their, the, their Facebook page or whatever it is. You know, and when we get together, you, the, the, the people that are, that are walking by, they see something, something in that. They see the joy, they see the laughter, they see the see something appealing in that time and they show great interest. They ask about the hobby because they see the fun and they see the community and they see that it's something that, that, that can give life and, and you make further connections. The group got grows. Encouraging people. There's life. You can see where this is going, can't you? You can see where this is going. This is just an illustration of grown men playing with toy cars. How much more 
the body of Jesus. The church. How much more? How much more when the community is centred on the saving work of Christ who has changed our lives, not toy cars? And it flows into other things. Like it flows into other things. I, I forgot to bring it out for the last story, but you know, aside from they don't think I'm a weird religious fellow, but uh, one of them decided to, to bring me, they bought this from a second hand shop. Um, you know, you don't want to look too, too close at it, I suppose, but at the end of the day, it's a fellow standing in front of a stained glass window preaching. Um, don't look up at the stool because there's a, a gun taped under there. But it's a. You know, because people, it's about community. It's about you can look past all these differences and love each other, care for each other, encourage each other. Do you see what I'm saying? And I think the church, the Acts church has got it. They understand it. They're living their lives as as a transformative means. They're, 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 They're responding to that which they've received in Jesus which is what we need to be doing. You know, while the setting is different, there is a lot we can take from the early church. They, they were centred on, on the right stuff. They were centred on their, their, their Saviour, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And there was expression within that community. If we look here, and this is King James speak, And the multitude of them that believed were of one heart and of one soul. Neither said any of them that ought of the things which he possessed was his own. So that that, that reminds me hard that they never said that it was theirs. They didn't hold anything back. But they had all things in common and with with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. So they were living witnesses to the risen Christ and great grace was upon them all. Do Do you see? When we send it on the right staff, there is life and there is vibrancy. Isn't that what we should be about as followers of the risen Christ. If we look at what happens when human stuff creeps in, think about your own circles for a moment. Because I'm going to reinforce that it's not easy to walk in this space. Think about your own settings. When people start to move in areas where they appear to have agendas, where differences, where human stuff creeps in, where ego becomes present, you know, if we apply that to, to whatever it is, we could we apply it to our families, to our friends, to the church. When those things creep in, it's no longer life giving. It sucks the life out of you. Life is drained. Think about it. When that stuff is part of the groups, we don't look forward to going. We're not motivated. We're not inspired. And then we think about things like we witness the bickering or the boasting. And all of a sudden, the encouragement isn't encouragement anymore. It's one-upmanship. And you know those little barbs that go out? Do you know what I'm talking about? The barbs. And then when it does erupt, you know, and when we're moving in our humanness, that happens, doesn't it? It's not just the two that have the conflict that feel the fallout, is it? It's a whole group. Sometimes people just wipe their hands off. They don't want any part of it. Then there's sometimes there's the choosing of sides and all this sort of thing. 
The whole group feels the fallout. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? When we're moving in our human side of things, there's no longer life there. Life only comes in Christ. You've probably experienced these things in your, in your, your own life. That's why we have to stay focused on Christ and celebrate and open ourselves to his transformative ways, to his likeness according to his word. And we celebrate what we've received. Because all of a sudden we remember we're all undeserving of God's love. And yet he loves us anyway. You know, once the destructive self comes in, there's, there's problems. There's no room for that. It's got to be centered on Jesus. And don't for one minute, like I said before, hear me saying that this is an easy thing to achieve because it's not. It's, it's a hard thing. You know, our human self is always there. It's always ready to raise its head. But we have to be intentional. What do we want the body of Christ to be like? Do we want to be how we created what we think is wonderful? Or do we want it to be how God ordained it? How God chose it to be? How God desires it to be? We have to be intentional in the choices that we make. We must remember every day, every day, the undeserved life and love and grace we receive in Jesus because this keeps us where we're at in fellowship with him, with him at the centre. And that is what we are bound together by as a community of believers. And if we are bound together in Christ as a community of believers, fair dinkum, there's life, vibrancy, joy. That's what I direct we see in our, our Acts reading. Do you, when you read that, you see there's, there's no self. You know, they're, they're looking to build each other up, to encourage that, that they are a true community centered in Christ, helping meet each other's needs. You know, it's, it's a bit like um, the image I have always had of the church has been one, and now I'm sure people can critique and, and say it's wrong, but look, I like it. You know, when we're, we're, we're standing linked arm by arm, we're all on a journey together. And if my arms get tired because I stumble on whatever it is that I so frequently stumble on, almost the steps earlier on, there's someone on each side of me holding me up. I want to be that for you too. Which everyone is uh, fortunate enough to stand next to me. That's the body of believers. Focus on Christ. Common vision. Reminds me of one of my favourite passages from, from Acts. You would have heard me before a number of times talk about the four hallmarks of the Acts church. It's from Acts 2, verses 42-47. And it's, it's when Jesus is at the centre of this community, again, we see that it thrives. And it says, They continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship. So they were committed to learning and growing to being in the Word, to reading the Bible, to breaking of bread, to the fellowship. I'll put those back to front. And in prayer. So, so they, they wanted to learn, they wanted to grow, they were based in the Word and the, the teaching of the apostles. They were committed to the fellowship. The fellowship extended beyond, they were breaking bread together. And they were committed to speaking with God in prayer. 
That's what I'm saying. And fear came upon every soul. And many wonders and signs were, were done by the apostles. So they were seeing amazing things by being in the right space. And all that believed were together. And they had all things in common. And sold their possessions and goods. And parted them to all men. So they supplied each other's need. And, they, and every man had as he needed. And they continued daily with one accord in the temple, in worship, breaking bread from house to house. So it wasn't just on a Sunday, it was beyond. And they ate their meat with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God. And this next, next bit. And having favour with all the people. See, people would see there was something amazing in fellowship with God. They could see that in the believers. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. When the church is centered on Christ and is intentionally about that business, Community, the church community is alive and vibrant, a witness to the risen Christ who has changed their lives. And people will see it. And they'll come to know, they'll want to know, because they see something precious, something that they desire, a treasure, and they'll see it in you. And that's a response the awesome love of God manifesting the lives of God's people. Where are you at? Where are we at? I think we need to be where God's at. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for the undeserved love that you share upon us. We ask for forgiveness for the times where we've, we've been part of or created a division, where we've, where we've gone along with our own agendas and desires, where we've been part of those, those times or those moments that have taken away from life. Lord, we long to be back in that bright space. Lead us, guide us, Lord. Let us be your people as you've called us to be. We pray, Lord, less of us, more of you. All for your glory. In Jesus' name. Amen.